One of the most common questions that gets asked when it comes to Inkscape for us as crafters is how do I take a photo and turn that into a cut file? Now in Inkscape, there are two ways of doing it. There's an easier way and a harder way. I personally don't love the easier way. It is quicker, but it can get you messy results. And sometimes it makes files which are very large and difficult for design space to handle. The harder method, however, gets you really precise results, but it does take longer and you need to have some level of Inkscape mastery to really be able to recreate it. The easier method uses a function in Inkscape called trace bitmap. And what that does is it scans your photo and traces it using some fancy maths to create your SVG. For the harder method, you use the Bezier pen and manually trace the image yourself. So that takes longer and the Bezier pen can be a bit confusing to use. I haven't found it that intuitive. It certainly took me some time to get used to it and I'm definitely learning more about it as I go. But I definitely think it's worth putting in the effort to understand it and learn how to do this more complicated method because once you can do that, then you can basically do most things within Inkscape and it will really open up your world of possibilities when it comes to creating on your digital cutting machine because you'll be able to design so many things yourself. In this video, I will cover the trace bitmap function and I will teach you all about the Bezier pen in future tutorials. So make sure you are subscribed and have your notifications on so that you will be notified when those tutorials come out. So let's head over to Inkscape. I have already imported an image that I want to create a cut file out of. It's currently a JPEG format. As ever, if you want to know how I've done my document properties to get my page to be a 12 by 12 size and so that things I create open in Design Space at the right size, I will link the video for you in the description below. Please check it out. So what we need to do is click on the image that we want to trace and then go up to Path and Trace Bitmap. Now we'll open up the menu on the right hand side. So you'll see that the dialog box that opens has got three sort of sub menus, trace bitmap, pixel art and help. So I mean help is useful just to kind of read a little bit more about what it is this function does. Pixel art ignore and let's just have a look at trace bitmap. Then within that what can you see? We've got single scan and multiple scan. So single scan is really when you're working with a black and white image or you want to create a black and white image and you're not worried about colors. So let's say I was creating a silhouette of these flowers and I'm not really fussed about having my leaves in green and my flowers in red, then single scan is what would work best because then I will just get the one color, one layer. If however, I do want to have my flowers remain red, then I would need to select multiple scans. But let's stay on single scan for now. The next thing you'll see is there's a drop down menu and there are different options here. Brightness cutoff, edge detection, etc. Each of these is just like a slightly different sort of algorithm for the way that this function will trace your image. I've played around with these and the one that I find is best for the kind of use that we need it for as crafters is brightness cutoff. So that's where I'm going to focus, but you can of course just kind of play around with these and if the result you get with the other ones works better for your purpose then of course go with that. So I'm going to stick on brightness cutoff. So what this algorithm does is it just analyzes your picture and it will look at the colors of each individual pixel and based on whether it thinks it's closer to black or closer to white it will either appear in your final SVG or it will just remove it. So I'll show you what the impact is of changing this brightness threshold number but to start with let's just click on this update button and it will give you like a bit of a preview of what your SVG will look like. So you can see it has traced it, but there are some fairly large areas that it's decided are closer to white and therefore are not appearing. So what we need to do is increase the threshold. So I'm gonna take this up to say 0.6 and then click update. And there you can see it's captured a lot more of the image. And if I take that up even higher to say 0.8, update, I'm getting a lot more of the image. So if I'm happy with how the preview is looking, all I would do is hit apply. And then that will create a tracing just in that one color, just in black. So one layer of my image. This is really beautiful. I could easily put this into design space and create some really lovely projects with it. So let's just go back and look at the trace bitmap tab again. One thing to remember is to make sure that the image on your canvas that you have selected is the one you want to trace. So right now you can see I've got that tracing selected, but I don't want that. I want to go back to my original image 
and um, I wanted to show you a few of the other functions here. So invert image is pretty self-explanatory. If I show you, if you update, you've basically taken everything white, made it black and vice versa. So if I take that off and update again, we'll go back to how it was. And then you've got these three options here on how you can change the way that the tracing is done. So speckles, that basically is going to try and help you to reduce any noise from your final image. You might have like little specks that are around the main picture that you want. So what it's saying is anything which is two pixels or smaller will be removed from your image. So this is something, if you find that when you trace you get loads of like little dots all over like the outside of the main thing you're trying to trace, increase that number and see if it helps. Smooth corners basically just means you don't have any sharp angles in your tracing, it will smoothen those out. Okay, and optimize is a good one to have selected because it will try and reduce the complexity of the tracing that you get. As I mentioned, this function does tend to produce um, images that have like loads of nodes in them and that can get sort of heavy and difficult for something like Design Space to handle. So let's move on now to multiple scans. The first drop down menu has again different ways that you can analyze the picture. Brightness steps, colors, or you can do kind of grayscale colors and auto trace. So for this one, I'm going to go with colors because like I said, maybe I want to have my flowers in red or at least in a different layer so that I can create them separately to the leaves. The number of scans, you could just think of as the number of different colors in your image. So I'm just gonna keep it as it is at eight. Now there are these three options, smooth, stack, and remove background. There isn't a lot of documentation around what smooth means. What it says is that it's going to apply a blur onto your image before it traces it. I would say what that means is basically you'll get smoother edges. But I've tested the result with or without it. It doesn't seem to make a huge difference, so just keep it on. Stack, what that will do is when you trace, you're now going to get lots of different layers in the different colors, and stack will just make sure they're precisely on top of each other. So you can keep that on, it's up to you. And then re remove background is of course if you want to get rid of the background. Here you can see there's a bit of a cream background. If I wanted to just extract that, because obviously it's got a color, and so when you trace by color, it would trace that as well, unless you say to remove the background. And then we have those same three options mentioned before. Speckles to get rid of sort of unwanted noise. You've got smooth corners just to get rid of sharp angles and again, optimize. So I'm going to make sure I've selected my image and I'm going to hit update to see what would this scan look like if I was doing it with colors. And that is actually looking quite nice. So why don't I hit apply on that? You do need to be a bit careful with your computer when you're doing this because it can be quite heavy for Inkscape to do these algorithms. So maybe keep saving your work as you go. So there we go, that's the image in color. So I'm going to just move it and zoom in so you can see how that looks. So that's actually looking very nice. The problem is going to be that there are going to be loads of layers here. So if I zoom back out a bit and do object and ungroup, you can see there's a few different layers. So if I start moving them for you, that must have been the black in the image. There's some red some green. So also stack is what has resulted in all these colors being on top of each other. But you can see that this is what I meant about trace bitmap being a bit of a clunky option because it's going to be hard to turn these different layers into a nice cut file. I mean this bottom layer in green is looking quite nice. I think there's one more layer there with orange. Oh it's the other way around. The green was on top and then we've got orange on the bottom. So you can see that is how this works. I think maybe sticking with a silhouette option with single scan is what would be best for use with a digital cutting machine. Okay, so let's try and see what this would look like with a smaller number of colors. Maybe that way we'll have fewer layers and then we'll be able to get our flowers separately easier. So again, make sure you select your original image. I'm gonna update number of scans to four and then hit update here. Yeah, I mean, it's looking like it might be a bit messy, but I'll, I'll just demonstrate. So I'll hit apply and show you what four scans would look like. Okay, so if we zoom in to look at these side by side. Yeah, you've definitely got fewer colors in this second scan that we did with the four. So if we ungroup that, we should be able to see that there are fewer layers. And then just pull these apart. 
Yeah, so we've got, this time we've just got the three layers actually. We've got red, green, and like a different shade of green. So yeah, for this particular image, scanning in different colors, it's not working so well to get the flowers out separately. This would be where, you know, I would get the Bezier pen and I would trace these flowers by hand. But now you know how to use this function. It is very good for creating silhouettes. I mean, this um, black image we created looked really lovely and definitely is usable. Let me just show you how I would clean the image up before putting it in design space. So if I zoom in, you can see there are some sections here like where you can see white, meaning, you know, there's a few random nodes there which would result in a cut line in design space. So what you want to do is to click on edit paths by nodes and then you would have to kind of zoom in and draw a box around the nodes you don't want and then just hit backspace on your keyboard. And if you zoom out, and you can see that little white patch has disappeared. So, you know, you'd have to kind of go through and find all of the areas like this and try and capture those nodes and delete them. You could, of course, also take the image straight into Design Space and then use Contour to get rid of those if you prefer. But if you are someone creating SVGs to sell, then this is the kind of thing you would want to know how to do within Inkscape. Okay, I hope you guys found that tutorial useful. Make sure to watch out for my Bezier pen tutorials, which will show you, as I mentioned, the more precise way of doing a tracing of a photo within Inkscape. I've also put together for you a little playlist of my most popular Inkscape tutorials, which I hope you will find useful and valuable. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until then, happy crafting!